Thank you for joining the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County. This morning, we are using the Holy Eucharist Service, Rite 2, and Eucharistic Prayer A. Today, being the first Sunday after Pentecost, we celebrate Trinity Sunday on June 7th. Our opening hymn, sung by Alan Fryer, is I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on cross more my salvation, his bursting from the spy said to me, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, I bind unto myself today. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word, praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we, we worship you, we, we give, give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Trinity Sunday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is the Old Testament lesson from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to chapter 2, verse 4a. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, and the image of God he created them, 
male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the earth that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the reading. Our psalm is Psalm 8, which we will say in unison. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. O Lord, our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. We celebrate Trinity Sunday today on the first Sunday after Pentecost. This is one of the seven principal feasts of the church year. It's the only Sunday in the church year that focuses exclusively on the doctrine of the church. And if we're going to be perfectly honest, it's a pretty complicated doctrine. In the Catechism of the Book of Common Prayer, the Trinity is defined as one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you don't know what that means, 
there's no need to worry. There are plenty of people who would be hard pressed to explain the meaning of the church doctrine of the Holy Trinity. My son, Michael, told me about a conversation he heard when he was studying at Queen's University in Belfast, Northern Ireland. One of the Irish students had been accepted at Harvard, but had chosen instead to attend Queen's University. A fellow student said, why would anyone turn down an offer from Harvard? The student, a good Irish Catholic, replied, well, you know, that's a mystery way up there together with the mystery of the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity. Yes, indeed, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity is a mystery. Explaining the doctrine is complicated by the fact that it's not defined in scripture and its meaning has been debated at councils of the church and among theologians over the centuries. In light of everything that has happened recently with the murder by a police officer of George Floyd, an unarmed African-American, and the nationwide and global protests, it seems irrelevant to be talking about the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. What is important to talk about is relationship. The Trinity is about the relationship between God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Christians, our relationship with God, with one another, and with our neighbor is critically important. The way in which we understand these relationships is shaped by scripture. In this reading from Genesis, we are told that God created each one of us, male and female, in God's image. This vital fact shapes our relationship with God, who created us in his image, and who adopts us as his beloved children. It affects our relationship with Jesus, who taught us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. It affects our relationship with other people. In the Great Commission, Jesus directed his disciples to go forth and make disciples of all nations. As followers of Jesus, we are called to do this as well. This Great Commission requires the creation of relationships among people, and not just some people, but all of God's people in all nations. At this critical time in our nation's history, we are called upon to consider the nature of our relationship with our neighbors. This relationship concerns the neighbors who live next door to us. It also concerns our brothers and sisters who are black and brown, regardless of where they live. This relationship concerns how we interact with other people who do not share our political views and preferences. This relationship concerns how we interact with fellow human beings, regardless of whether or not they are citizens of our nation. We are all an integral part of the one human family created by God. The scripture in Genesis tells us that God created male and female in his image. As Christians, we are called to see the face of God in all other persons. In our baptismal vows, as Episcopalians, we commit to seek and serve Christ in all persons love our neighbor as ourselves, strive for justice and peace, and respect the dignity of every human being. We are called to share God's love and help other people understand that they are loved by God and valued by God. This is not always easy to do. It requires us to offer sacrificial, unconditional love and generous hospitality to every person we meet. The mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. The reference to all persons and every human being is crucial. Our Christian love of others is unconditional. No one is to be exempt from our love and respect. Sadly, we live in a world broken by the sins of systemic racism and injustice. 
at this time, there is a great deal of anxiety, confusion, grief, and loss. There's also a great deal of fear. Many of our neighbors, especially our neighbors who are persons of color, live in great fear every day. Parents fear that when their children leave home in the morning, they may not return home safely. Children fear that when their parents leave home, they may not return home safely. Many white people fear that the American society in which they grew up is changing in ways that they don't like or understand. Many of them are fearful of these changes. No one should have to live in fear. Only love can conquer fear. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry preaches eloquently about the power of God's love. He has said, there is power in love to help and heal when nothing else can. There is power in love to lift up and liberate when nothing else will. There's power in love to show us the way to live. In every season of life and every situation, especially in times of crisis, uncertainty, and loss, we return to Jesus and his way of love in order to stay centered on God and live with hope, compassion, and wisdom. In the Episcopal Church, we follow the principles and practices of the way of love, in which is the way of Jesus. Love chooses to turn and trust in God, who grants us freedom in the midst of adversity, uncertainty, selfishness, and fear. Love seeks guidance from the life and teachings of Jesus and notices God's story unfolding in the world around us. Love offers up concerns, thanksgiving, and intercessions, and listens for the voice of God in every situation and season of life. Love gathers with community to pray, sing, replenish, strength, and celebrate the goodness of God wherever possible, online, in homes, in small groups, in creation, and in congregations. Love practices generosity and compassion rather than scarcity and division, unselfishly sharing whatever we have, our faith, our care, our stories, our resources, and our time. Love stands in solidarity with the most vulnerable and oppressed, sacrificing ease and seeking the other's well-being. Love trusts in God's gracious call to rest, releasing control into the hands of the one who abides and who will not let us go. I invite you to think about the, what you might do each day to show God's love to someone else. So many people are frightened, worried, anxious, or hurting. What might you hear that they are not saying? Can you ask them if they're hurting? Can you ask them if they're worried? Can you call someone to let them know that you are thinking about them and you care about them? Can you send a letter or card to someone who is homebound or feeling isolated and lonely? Can you offer to buy groceries to an elderly person or couple? Can you donate canned goods for our local food pantries? Can you share a bouquet of flowers from your garden with a neighbor? Can you share a favorite book with a friend now that public libraries are closed? There are countless ways in which we can share God's love with other people. Let us follow the way of love, which is the way of Jesus. Let me close with this prayer for the human family from the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, 
all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your earthly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together our statement of faith, the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 2, the Book of Common Prayer, pages 385 to 386. In the course of the silence after each bidding, the people offer their own prayers, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops Michael and Mark, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially George Floyd, Brianna Taylor, and all those who have died. Pray for those who have died. Your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving may be offered at this time. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have Christ glorify Christ in our own day. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. In the Holy Communion, we will use 
Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being, and we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him, Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. A prayer when we cannot attend worship. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, proclaim your resurrection and await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 368, Holy Father, Great Creator. Holy Father, Great Creator, source of mercy, love, and peace, Look upon the Mediator, clothe us with his righteousness. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, through the Savior hear and bless. Holy Jesus, Lord of glory, whom angelic hosts proclaim, while we hear thy wondrous story, meet and worship in thy name. Dear Redeemer, dear Redeemer, in our hearts thy peace proclaim. Holy Spirit, sanctifier, come with unction from above. Touch our hearts with sacred fire, fill them with the Savior's love. Source of comfort, source of comfort, cheer us with the Savior's love. God the Lord through every nation, let thy wondrous mercy shine. In the song of my salvation, every tongue and race combine. Great Jehovah, great Jehovah, form our hearts and make them thine. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us. I hope you will join us for our Wednesday evening prayer and will join us next Sunday for our worship service. And please also visit our website where you can learn more about the resources that we have. May you be blessed. May you keep safe and may you be well.